I am so excited about this video today because it is a new method of meal prepping for the keto diet that is gonna save you so much time. Today we're meal prepping breakfast, but it's not just gonna be like multiple meals made separately. We're gonna be making four key recipes that are gonna be used to make other recipes throughout the week, and they're all gonna be made in a sheet pan. I'm gonna show you how to make each of these keto breakfast recipes. I'm gonna tell you the macros, and I'm gonna show you how you can use each of them to create a different breakfast every single day. The first keto sheet pan breakfast item that we're going to make is some bacon. Now, if you guys haven't had bacon in the oven, it's one of the best ways to make bacon because cleanup is super simple and it tastes so good. The way that those fats caramelize on that pan, you will love it. I have a large sheet pan. I'm gonna line this with foil because it will make cleanup so easy. You'll just have to take that foil, scrunch it up into a ball and throw it away and you don't even have to wash your pan unless it got greasy. Then I'm gonna take a package of bacon and lay down my strips onto the foil. I'm gonna set that aside and not put it in the oven yet because I wanna work on our next keto sheet pan meal, which is going to be potatoes. We're gonna be making keto potatoes. They're not really potatoes. We're gonna be using radishes instead. It's a very popular way of making a keto potato. I do have something different though on my channel where I make keto hash browns without using any sort of radish, turnip, rutabaga. We actually make them out of coconut flour. Click up here if you guys wanna watch that, or I'll have it listed down below in the description box. So if you're not a huge fan of like radishes or vegetable turned into a potato, then you're gonna wanna check out that recipe. But we are gonna be making keto potatoes using radishes. And there's a couple of different types of radishes that I like to use. I use these just because it's the most accessible ones that you could find at a grocery store. I'm gonna be using red radishes and a daikon radish. The daikon, sometimes you can't find that at your local store, but usually a red radish you can. And the cool thing about using using a red radish is that it actually looks like red potatoes when you cook them up. So after you've washed your radishes, we're gonna slice off the tops and the little tips to them. And then I'm gonna cut these into quarters or just small bite-sized chunks. I'm gonna be doing this for two bunches of radishes plus a small amount of daikon radish too. The next step is that I like to add some flavor to these. So either in a Ziploc bag or a small bowl, add in your radishes and then sprinkle on some drizzles of olive oil along with salt and pepper. You could add some different flavoring here too if you wanted to add some fresh herbs or some dry herbs. This will give it more of that rustic flavor. Once your radishes are coated, we are gonna pour them onto a foil lined baking sheet. And now taking my sheet pan of bacon and my sheet pan of radishes, we are gonna pop these in a 400 degree oven. The bacon will take around 14 minutes to cook. While the radishes take longer, they will take around 23, 25, 30 minutes to cook, somewhere around there. And sometimes the combination of having two things in your oven can increase baking times too, so just keep that in mind. But baking these at the same time is a great way to smash out two recipes at once. Now when it comes to the macros, I don't really need to go over the macros for bacon because you you can just look at the package, but bacon is such a keto friendly food and it's filled with tons of flavor, filled with lots of fat and protein too, so it's gonna keep you full. Now when it comes to selecting a bacon, a lot of times people will try and steer away from the ones that have sugar in it. Other people on the keto diet or the carnivore diet don't really care because it's cured with sugar and it doesn't really penetrate down into it is what they say. Um, just go with whatever type of bacon you wanna use. I've done both. I've used ones that don't use sugar or nitrates or nitrites or anything like that to cure it and ones that do. Now for our keto potatoes or our fried radishes, the macros are gonna be split into let's say it's gonna serve eight people. It really depends on how you portion this out. So let's say they're gonna be eight servings in your radishes. It would be 69 calories, 7.1 grams of fat, protein is 0 0.4 grams, total carbs is one total carb, and net carbs is one gram. 
Now your bacon's probably gonna be done first, so you could take that out when it's ready. I like to remove the bacon and place it in a storage container, and just check out that bottom of that sheet pan. There is a ton of delicious grease, bacon grease, that you guys should save for other recipes. So pour that out and save it, just because it makes a really good flavor component if you're making any sort of stir fry for dinner. You can actually make bacon mayonnaise out of leftover bacon grease. I'll have a recipe listed down below in the description box for that if you wanna check that out. Once your radishes are ready, let them cool on this tray for just a few minutes before transferring them to a storage container too. Before we get into the next recipe, I wanna share with you guys something that I have been loving every single morning. It's a different type of coffee. It's a coffee by Golden Ratio. It's a coffee that basically drinks up like a tea. So you brew some water, you put the tea bag that has the coffee inside of it in your mug, pour in the hot water and let it steep. But the cool thing about this coffee is that it's five times less acidic than regular black coffee. It's smooth, it is delicious, they have different types of flavors. My favorite flavors are the chai spice and the vanilla flavored coconut. I like to pour just a little hint of cream into my golden ratio coffee. It's a good coffee to have in the morning if you just are really sensitive to the acid within coffee. This is so smooth. I also love it as an afternoon treat. A huge thanks to Golden Ratio for sponsoring this video, and they would like to extend my audience a great offer. Just click down below in the description box. Moving on to our next keto sheet pan breakfast recipe, let's make some pancakes on a sheet pan. This is really like a fail safe way to make keto pancakes. If you're one that struggles with flipping pancakes or you just don't have the right equipment, just baking it on a sheet pan is, it, per, it cooks it up perfectly every single time. And this recipe for my keto cream cheese pancakes is so delicious. It tastes like a regular pancake. It's really good with some butter and syrup on it or you could have it plain on its own. Everything starts in a blender. You wanna add 12 ounces of softened cream cheese, which is a brick and a half of cream cheese, six eggs, three quarter cups of coconut flour, a half a cup of sweetener. I'm gonna use a monk fruit blend sweetener, but you could use whatever sweetener you want to. Three quarter cups of heavy whipping cream, or you can use a nut milk if you didn't wanna use heavy cream. Three teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Blend this together until it's smooth, and then we're gonna pour this onto our baking tray. Now, when it comes to lining your tray, I'm not gonna use foil this time. I'm gonna use parchment paper because I don't want it to stick to the bottom of the tray, and parchment paper will allow these pancakes to easily lift off. But there's a trick that you have to do to lay down the parchment paper. You wanna spray the baking sheet with some cooking spray first, lay down a sheet of parchment paper, and you wanna lay it as certain way so that it has edges over the side so you could easily lift up your pancakes and then lay down a second sheet next to it. Then we're gonna coat the top of the parchment paper with some more cooking spray. Pour in your pancake batter onto your tray, spread it around with a spatula or a spoon so that it's even across all of the edges in the entire dish. And then we're gonna set this aside because we're gonna work on our next keto sheet pan breakfast, which are scrambled eggs. To make sheet pan eggs, we're gonna take a large bowl and I'm gonna crack in 12 eggs. I'm also gonna add a quarter cup of heavy cream. You could also substitute with cream cheese here if you wanted. And I'm gonna add in some cheese. This is optional, you don't have to add in cheese, but I'm gonna add in a half of a cup of shredded cheese. You're also gonna to need to season it, so I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Whisk this together until it's combined. Another suggestion is that you guys could add in some veggies here if you wanted, or maybe some cooked crumbled sausage or bacon, just to add some more flavor, some more interest into this dish. Then using that same method as we did for lining our tray with the pancakes, we're gonna do this with the eggs too. So with the two sheets of parchment paper, spraying down oil before, and then after you place the parchment paper down. Then pour in your egg mixture. 
Now both these keto pancakes and our sheet pan eggs will go into the oven at the same temperature. We're decreasing that temperature down to 350 degrees and we're gonna bake it at that temp. The pancakes will take around 17 to 20 minutes to cook. You just wanna cook it until it's set on the top. If you kind of push it down, it kind of springs back a little bit or until it gets a little golden brown on top. The eggs will take around 23, 25 minutes. Just again, cook it until it is set. You don't wanna overcook it because your eggs will be rubbery. Once these are done baking, remove your pancakes and your eggs from the oven, and we're gonna slice up both the pancakes and our eggs. I'm gonna slice up the eggs into 12 portions. You could either go a larger amount of portions or smaller amount of portions, depending on your family size and your needs for the week. And the pancakes, I'm actually gonna split these into smaller portions, just because they are pretty big. You can store both of these in a storage container for your refrigerator. All of these recipes, that's the beauty of this, is because they can all be prepped up ahead of time, store them in meal prep containers in your fridge, and then pull them out the morning that you wanna have them. With the pancakes, I do like to put down a little sheet of parchment paper in between each pancake, just because I don't wanna run the risk of them sticking together in the storage container. Let's go over the macros for our keto sheet pan pancakes. Let's say this makes around 15 servings if you were to get 15 squares out of your entire sheet pan. Each pancake square would be 134 calories, 11.1 .1 grams of fat, 4.8 grams of protein, total carbs is four grams, and net carbs is two grams. And this makes a good size pancake too. It's pretty thick, it's like a regular size pancake, so you could probably have two of them for breakfast if you wanted. Let's go over the macros for the sheet pan eggs. I think this makes around 12 servings. Once again, it depends on how you cut this and portion it out. But if you cut it into 12 squares, each egg would be 105 calories. Total fat is 8.5 grams. Protein is 7.2 grams. Total carbs is 0.2. And net carbs is 0.2. These are really good macros for these eggs, but then again, it's just basically eggs, heavy cream and cheese. Now that you have these four keto sheet pan breakfast recipes done, assembled, they're prepped and in a refrigerator, now what do we do? Well, this is where the fun creative part comes into play. So you guys could actually use these to make different combinations of breakfast meals throughout the week. One of my favorites is to make a keto McGriddle breakfast sandwich just by taking two of your pancakes, put an egg in there, some of that bacon, pour in some sugar-free maple syrup, and you have an easy keto breakfast sandwich. Another option is to make a keto burrito. So take a low carb tortilla or one of like the cheese tortillas, whichever low carb keto approved tortilla you wanna use. Lay down some egg, I like to cut it into some chunks. Same with some bacon, you can add in some of your fried radish for a little potato, add some sour cream, salsa, green onions, and you have a delicious breakfast burrito. Another option is to make a keto scramble. So take your eggs and cut them up into small chunks. Same with the bacon, add in some potatoes, maybe add a little bit of flavoring in there, like maybe some more butter, some chopped up vegetables, put it back into the skillet, let it cook for just a couple minutes and you have a whole new meal, which is a keto breakfast scramble. Another option is just the obvious one, which is just to have a plate of pancakes, eggs, bacon, and fried radishes. Top your pancakes with some butter and syrup, and that is a full breakfast right there. There's so many other different ideas and combinations. I wanna hear what you guys think. What would you guys play around with if you had these four keto breakfast ingredients to play with? Let us know down in the comments. I hope this video shed some new light on how you guys can easily meal prep if you're on the keto diet. Don't forget to check out Golden Ratio and their lines of low acidic, smooth, delicious coffees. Once again, I'll have their information listed down below for you guys. Mm -hmm.